Good evening, yes, friends. Welcome to Daily Editorial Analysis brought you by Shankarayas Academy. Today's date is 11th November 2024. In this video, we are going to discuss three important topics. The first one is about the leaky PDS system. The second one is about the declining health spending and its relationship with SDG goals. The third one is about India's TB elimination target. So, these are the three important editorial articles we are going to discuss in this video. Shankarayas Academy's pre strumming Prelims Test Series Batch 3 is starting on 21st November. 2024. Shankarai S Academy's Chakra Initiative for Current Affairs program is also going on. So, interested aspirants can enroll in them. Now, let us get into the discussion. Now, look at this article. The recent trends indicate a decline in government health spending. So, there is a less government spending for health across low income countries and lower middle income countries, including India. So, this has raised concerns about meeting the SDG, that is, sub Sustainable Development Goals. This is especially the world is emerging from COVID-19 pandemic and the countries are spending less for health care. So, we have to analyze this trend. The health spending increased during the pandemic, but after the pandemic it has fallen. The low income countries seeing a drop back to pre-pandemic levels by 2023. So, the health spending has been reduced to pre-pandemic levels. The lower middle income countries also follows the same trend. Between 2019 and 2023, the annual growth rate of government health spending per capita was much lower than 2015 to 2019 period. So, the health care spending after the pandemic was much lower than the health care spending which is before the pandemic. So, the share of health care expenditure in government budget has consistently fallen across many developing countries including India. So, in India, the health care spending dropped below 2 percentage of GDP and further cuts are expected. Regarding the SDG goal, the COVID-19 has reversed the positive trend with the global life expectancy. So, the global life expectancy was increasing to 71.4 years by 2021. The maternal mortality ratio is largely stuck at the level more than three times the 2030 target. The proportion of population lacking the essential health care services fell by approximately 15 percentage between 2000 and 2021. So far, we have seen the data and the trends regarding the health care spending. Now, what are the challenges for health care expenditure in developing countries? Firstly, about meeting the SDG goals. The reduced health care spending undermines the progress towards the SDG targets. So, the progress towards the universal health coverage or quality health care and addressing the public health inequalities are not properly met. Then about the impact on public health. See, countries like India have limited health spending. So, they face heightened risk due to reduced budget and they impact the essential health services. So, this affects the most of the vulnerable population who are more exposed to the health risk. The third one is the dependence on international aid. Some least income countries rely on external funding to meet the health targets. So, with the fluctuating government spending, these nations are struggling to establish a sustainable health care system. Now, coming to the way forward section, prioritizing the health in budget allocation is a first important step. The governments, especially in low income countries and low middle income countries, should ensure that health remains a budget priority to sustain the SDG progress. So, in order to improve and maintain the sustainable development goals, the countries should give importance to the health care spending. The policy makers need to explore the innovative and efficient ways to optimize the limited health resources. So, they should also explore the digital health solutions. Then, the developmental partners and international financial institutions must collaborate to provide support to the countries in maintaining the health funding. A significant reduction in government health spending risk progress on SDG health targets. For countries like India, it is critical to reinvest in the health to build a resilient and sustainable health care system. Now, look at this main question. In countries like India, the share of health expenditure in total government budget has been consistently falling. What are the reasons behind this decline and what impact could it have on health care sector? So, this is a main question regarding this topic. You can try to answer this question. Now, let us move on to the next news article. Now, look at this article. The article discusses the India struggle to meet its ambitious target of eliminating the tuberculosis by 2025. So, this 2025 elimination target is set by the government which is ahead of global 2030 deadline. The recent reports indicate that India has not achieved the 2020 milestones in TB incidence and mortality reduction. So, it is unlikely to meet 2025 targets. 
Even though we are experiencing some progress, the current reduction rate remains insufficient to reach this elimination goal. So, India is unlikely to reach the elimination target by 2025. So, this is what the article is talking about. In this context, let us have an overview of tuberculosis and what are the steps taken by India and what are the challenges lies. See, tuberculosis is a bacterial infection which is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis and this bacterium primarily affects the lungs but it is also capable of infecting other parts of the body and it spreads through airborne droplets which means the people in close contact with the TB patients are at higher risk. According to global TB report of 2024, India accounts for 27% of global TB cases. So, 27% of world TB patients are living in India and India is facing a huge burden of tuberculosis. The WHO's end TB strategy aims to reduce the TB death by 90% and TB incidence by 80% by 2030. Looking at the target in India, the TB elimination target was fixed at 2025. So, it means India aims to eliminate TB by 2025, which is 5 years ahead of UN Sustainable Development Goals target of 2030. So, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals aims to eradicate TB by 2030. But India has fixed a target of eradicating TB 5 years before that is 2025 but still India has not moved towards that progress. So, this target of eliminating TB by 2025 in India is announced in 2018. It is announced under National Strategic Plan for Tuberculosis Elimination. Now, what is Nikshai Poshan Yojana? NPY, it provides direct benefit transfers that is DBT to the TB patients to support their nutritional needs. In 2024, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare doubled the benefit transfer from 500 to 1000 per month to the entire treatment period. So, the TB patients can receive 1000 rupees for their nutritional needs per month during their entire treatment period. Additionally, 3000 is also provided for diagnosis to cover the immediate cost. So, during the time of diagnosis, an additional amount of 3000 is also given. So, this is provided under Nikshai Poshan Yojana. Now, what are the important challenges in meeting the TB elimination target? Why India is struggling to eliminate TB? Let us discuss the challenges one by one. The first one is high disease burden. So, India has the highest number of TB cases globally, which accounts for 27% of world's TB burden. This we have seen earlier. So, this vast number creates a pressure on healthcare system. For example, the case reduction, treatment, follow-up, everything is a huge burden on India's already struggling healthcare system. So, this huge disease burden is a major challenge for controlling the TB. The second one is the drug resistant TB. See, the rise in multi drug resistant TB or extensively drug resistant TB complicates the treatment. See, over a course of time, that mycobacterium, that is the bacterium which causes the tuberculosis, gains the resistance to the medicine. That is, they become resistant to the drugs which treats the TB. So, this becomes harder and more costly to treat the TB. Now, the third important challenge is under-reporting in private sector. See, a large proportion of TB patients seek care in private sector, which do not always follow the government notification requirements. So, this leads to under-reporting and difficulty in tracking the cases. The fourth one is the treatment adherence. See, TB treatment requires long-term commitment, which is often six months or more. But many patients discontinue the treatment midway due to side effects or stigma or financial constraints. So, this discontinuation of TB treatment will also lead to drug resistant TB. So, this is an addition problem. I mean, the fifth challenge is social stigma and discrimination. See, the TB patients often face social stigma which discourages people from seeking timely diagnosis and treatment. So, this stigma can affect employment and social support for TB patients. So, it impacts their recovery from TB. So, social stigma and discrimination is a major challenge in India. The last important challenge is delay in diagnosis and treatment. See, in many rural and marginalized communities, there is a lack of awareness and inadequate healthcare facilities, which leads to delay in TB diagnosis. So, this leads to unreported and untreated spread of TB and it worsens the patient's health outcomes. So, these are the important challenges for India in meeting its elimination target by 2025. Unless these challenges are addressed, it is very harder for India to eliminate TB. Now, what can be the strategies and suggestions to eliminate TB? Firstly, strengthening the early diagnosis and screening. 
conduct regular screening in high risk areas such as lungs and prisons in order to identify the DB cases early and treat them. So, this will reduce their spread. Since India has huge population, the disease will spread faster and it should be addressed earlier by early diagnosis. We should also employ the enhanced diagnostic tools. The tools like Gene Expert and CBNAT at primary health centers can ensure the quick and accurate TB detection. So, the primary health care centers should be properly equipped with the diagnostic tools in order to identify the TB. The second one is improving the treatment adherence. So, engaging the community health care workers to monitor the patient's treatment can provide support and adherence to the patients. The second one is digital monitoring. Using apps and SMS reminders through Nikshai platform can track the treatment progress and remind the patients to take their medication timely. Encouraging the shorter treatment regimes using the public-private partnership for improving the healthcare system and investing in research and development for vaccine development for TB and increasing the funding and international collaboration and partnering with the WHO are some of the strategies that can be used for faster elimination of TB in India. So, this is all about this news article discussion. In this news article discussion, we have seen what are the trends in TB in India, what are the challenges in eradicating TB and what can be the strategies in eliminating the TB in India by 2025. So, this is the main question regarding this topic. Take a note of it. Now, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, look at this article. The PDS system in India, which is meant to provide the subsidized food grains to poor, faces significant insufficiency and leakages. So, this insufficiency and leakages is leading to wastage of public resources. The recent data indicates that a nationwide leakage rate of 28 percentage and some states experiencing a leakage of above 30 percentage. So, the article calls for a serious examination of public distribution system and proposals for reforming the system. So, in this context, let us discuss briefly about what is said in the article. See, PDS is India's food security system and it is administered by Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution. Initially, it is created to manage the food scarcity by providing the food grains at affordable prices. It is operated jointly by central and state governments. Now, looking at the evolution of PDS system, during World War II, the PDS was introduced as a wartime rationing measure. And until 1960s, PDS system relied primarily on food grain imports. And after 1960, it expanded to address the food shortages. Agricultural Prices Commission and Food Corporation of India, that is FCA, was established for the procurement of food grains and storage. In 1970s, the PDS evolved into a universal scheme providing subsidies to food. Till 1992, it functioned as a general entitlement scheme for all. During June 1992, the launch of revamped public distribution system, it is launched to improve the access in remote areas. In 1997, the public distribution system was called as the targeted public distribution system and it categorized the beneficiaries as below poverty line and above poverty line. In December 2000, Antodhya Anna Yojana was launched to assist the poorest below poverty line households. Then in 2013, National Food Security Act was made, which provided a legal entitlement to subsidize to food. Integration of technology through e-point of sale devices and One Nation, One Ration Card initiative were made in recent years. So, this is the evolution of public distribution system in India. Now, looking at the operation of PDS, firstly, procurement. The farmers sell their produce to the government at a minimum support price. Then, central allocation. The FCA, that is Food Corporation of India, allocates a procured food grains at central issue price to the state governments. So, FCA allocates the food grains to the state governments under the central issue price. The state governments receive the allocated grains from the FCA and the state governments distribute these grains to fair price shops. The fair price shop sell the grains at subsidized rates to the beneficiaries under PDS. So, this is the flow of PDS system. Now, what is the significance of PDS? It helps in poverty alleviation and social welfare. PDS plays a crucial role in supporting the low income families. So, thereby it ensures the food security. It is a safety net for vulnerable population. See, so it acts as a protective measure for poor especially during economic hardship. It supports the farmers by providing MSP. It acts as a crisis resilience and serves as a buffer against food shortages during drought. It is also a tool for malnutrition prevention. 
It contributes to better nutrition for children, pregnant women and other vulnerable groups. It is also a balanced food distribution. It redistributes the food from surplus producing regions to those with the shortages. So thereby it ensures equitable access to food across India. Now what are the challenges in current PDS? The first important challenge is high leakage rate. 28% of PDS food grains do not reach the beneficiaries. In states like Manipur and Madhya Pradesh, the leakages were even above 30%. Around 19.69 million metric tons of food are misallocated. So this leads to economic losses and it undermines the PDS objectives. PDS system focuses mainly on rice and wheat and it neglects the pulses and vegetables. So there is a nutritional gap in PDS system. The high rates of stunting and wasting in children under 5 reflect the poor nutrition system in the country. So these are some of the challenges associated with public distribution system. Now coming to the way forward points, we should restrict the PDS benefits to the poorest households that is Antodia scheme beneficiaries. The wealthier beneficiaries could pay at least half of the MSP price for getting the food grains. So there must be targeted coverage to benefit the poorest households and below poverty line households. We should also enhance the nutritional security. FCA should include pulses, millets and vegetables in PDS system to provide a balanced diet and tackle the malnutrition. We should also incorporate the technology for leakage prevention using digital tools like point of sale systems, real time monitoring and other based biometrics can reduce the leakage and ensure accountability. Using savings from the streamlined PDS for investments in agriculture, rural development and skill training. We should also implement the transparent audits and publish the leakage data. So it can establish oversight by dedicated community for continuous improvement. So these are some of the strategies to improve the public distribution system. With this we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar AS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.